The Niles SNA Silent Film Museum is located in what is now the historic district of Niles in the city of Fremont. People from the film industry from all parts of the world visit Niles Silent Film Museum to commemorate the greatest silent films that influence modern day entertainment. Today we spoke with David Keene, who enlightened us on the personal experience with silent films. I'm a historian for the Niles SNA Silent Film Museum. Uh, I do a lot of different things at the museum, film programming, projectionist, take care of uh, a lot of the behind the scenes things at the museum. The Niles Film Museum today, however, isn't identical to what it used to be due to several changes over the years. However, despite this, the SNA Silent Film Museum has made huge efforts to contribute to bringing the past back to life. The beginning here uh, in uh, 2001, a bunch of us formed a nonprofit, the Niles SNA Silent Film Museum. And uh, um, in 2004, we uh, got access to this 1913 Nickelodeon movie theater, the Edison Theater. Moved in, and uh, in January of 2005, we started showing silent films with uh, live music accompaniment and uh, every Saturday night, and we've been doing that pretty much ever since. As uh, more films have become uh, into the public domain, uh, we've been showing uh, films that we haven't been able to show before because of the rental fee fees that we'd have to charge, and we showed uh, just last month, I believe, uh, Go West with Buster Keaton for the first time, and it was our first sellout crowd since before COVID. Wow. So uh, he still brings people into the shows. <laughs> the technology used by old directors such as Charlie Chaplin has left a huge imprint on the Silent Film Museum, which has allowed them to accumulate such a large amount of exotic equipment, along with around 10 to 12,000 silent films over the years in various different ways. We have over 10,000 films in our collection here at the museum, film prints, not digital uh, copies, but film prints that we show out of our original projection booth at the theater. Over the years, um, we've gathered lots and lots of films, uh, and uh, um, our first uh, collection actually came from Maloney College that were, uh, was uh, stored in a closet there for many years, and uh, it was owned by a, a film collector named Robert Maskell. We also, as, as collectors in the Bay Area, uh, older collectors started dying. Their relatives gave those collections to us, so we would get maybe two, three, four, or five hundred films at a time from various collections that became available. One of our mentors that really started out uh, um, helping us at the beginning was David Shepard, who was a world-renowned film preservationist, and uh, he had a, a, a collection of his own of about 3,000 prints that he gave us. And uh, he also arranged to get a, a, a rental collection of films uh, that was owned by Murray Glass in Southern California of about 5,000 films that uh, came here to the museum. And then we just continued to collect collection after a collection. In terms of the equipment that we have here at the museum, um, when we came into the uh, auditorium in 2004, there was no equipment at all in the original projection booth, just the tin lined room itself. Uh, so we had to acquire the equipment to actually project films again. At the same time, we've also been collecting vintage film equipment over the years, uh, a lot of it donated to us by Les Thomas, uh, a former newsreel cameraman in the 50s and 60s, uh, Dick Bartell, who was a projectionist uh, starting in the 1930s, uh, gave us a lot of stuff. Uh, people whose relatives owned the equipment uh, gave us a lot of equipment, and, and we've tried to fix as much as of, it, of it as we could up so that it would actually run again. Um, we also got uh, a lot of vintage silent film cameras in our collection. A lot of them donated to us. Uh, some of them you, are rare and, uh, and a few things that are unique 
one of a kind. Finally, Mr. Keene offered some final thoughts on silent films to future museum goers. So I think uh, people who haven't seen silent films before may be surprised by, by them if they come to the theater and look at them on the screen. Uh, in the past, uh, people have gotten an impression about what silent films look like and what their content is and, and not a very good impression. Uh, sometimes you see them speeded up and the quality looks pretty bad, you know, fuzzy, contrasty, maybe even out of focus. Uh, but silent filmmakers were really meticulous about making good quality films. and. Uh, uh, and we have some really great prints of uh, films, some taken from the original camera negatives in our collection. And when you see a good quality print with live music on the screen with a, a crowd, uh, I think you can really get carried away and, and uh, be impressed by a silent film. If you would like to learn more about the Niles Film Museum, visit NilesFilmMuseum.org. From the Niles Asane Silent Film Museum, this is Murtaza Nakvi with Ohlone Tri-City News.